In this video you learn how to recreate this classic Commodore 64 game. This video is part 2 of a series. In this part you learn how to create a game object and use keyboard input. If you have missed the first part of this tutorial, click here to watch it first. Otherwise, let's go. When creating games it's very important to separate the game logic from the rendering. This way, game logic and rendering systems can be substituted when needed. An example would be to reuse the game logic when a game needs to run on different devices. To separate the rendering from the game logic, Alex creates a separate game class. The first thing it needs is a list of words. Then it needs a function to create a new round. Notice that each time the first word is selected. This is good for testing. Later, Alex will pick a random word from the list. The game also needs to respond to typed characters. When a key is pressed, there are two possibilities. The key matches the first character of the word or not. If the key matches the first character of the word, the word is stripped from the first character and the function returns true. Otherwise, the function returns false. And that is everything this game class can do. Alex needs to test if it works and passes a game object to the render class. The initializer stores the game object. Now the renderer has access to game information and can pass key presses to it. Passing a dependency to another object is called dependency injection and it is what allows Alex to decouple his renderer and game object. At this point Alex can use the word from the game object to put on the screen. To test this Alex creates an instance of the game class. and passes it to the renderer. There is one task left and that is that the start function should also create a new round. Alex starts the game. And that works. Alex thinks it's very cool that the renderer now has access to the game object and its data. Now he wants to do the opposite and that is to send key presses from the renderer to the game object. Now it's time to respond to key presses. A piglet window class can implement a key press method that is called when a key is pressed. Key presses are registered as ASCII values and Alex converts them to uppercase characters. Alex asks the game object if the typed key matches the first character of the word. And if correct, it needs to check if the word has characters left. If so, Alex strips a character of the rendered characters. Else, the word is complete and he restarts the game. Alex should now be able to type characters away and he tests the game. And that works. Alex can type away characters and now it's time to make things move. And to see how that works, click on the screen right now and we'll see each other in the next video.